Ooh, let me change the lighting here. <laughs> uh. Oh, wait, that's the wrong camera. That's why. Got it. That's better. There we go. You look yeah, the laptop. <laughs> the, the laptop camera is my one fail on buying this particular laptop for Linux. <coughs> it wasn't clear that it was meant to be controlled by a proprietary Windows driver. The, um, so, okay. Um, I don't really have a lot today because I think all of us, both of us, have been busy with other things. <laughs> Some of them governance related, but not things we discussed in this meeting. Yep. So. Agreed. <clears throat> so is there <clears throat> any reason not to go ahead and merge the charter guidance into drafts and send uh, it to yeah. Alana and um, Sad yes. for Yes. Yeah. Um, only because right now it's um, it's failing the Netlify check. Really? Oh, okay. And I don't know oh, why. Right, and we haven't been able to figure it out because Carolyn's been on vacation. Yeah. Uh, so as soon as Carolyn comes back and tells me, I, I suspect there's some header stuff I need to add to this file to make Netlify happy. I just don't know what it is or specifically why it's failing and how to fix it. So I suspect it's probably it's probably not a big deal. I just need Carolyn's help to do it. Because I could look at the others and just sort of guess at what's wrong, um, mm -hmm. but I think it's probably better just to to wait so that we don't do something that breaks the stuff that she's working on. Okay. And that's kind of it. My, you know, yeah. what my governance time for the past two weeks has been taken up with. So. <laughs> Likewise. The, um, I mean, actually, it occurred to me that you know. Uh, messing around with Electo, that there's a second way that the CNCF could effectively be multi-tenant Electo. That hmm. would probably be more manageable for them. Yeah. Than um, spinning up individual instances for each project that's going to use it. Of course, that might also be more um, administratable for them. Mostly, I just need to finish getting it packaged up and transferred. Um, yeah. Just you know, we we ran into a hitch with transferring ownership of the Electo IP to the CNCF, namely that the .io TLD is blocking domain transfers. Oh, I heard that from someone else. Someone else was saying that. Yeah, the .io TLD has always been kind of questionably managed. It's one of those things where the UK kind of looted that domain from the island that owned it. And um, it's in the hands of someone we don't actually know who now. <laughs> some shady contractor um wow so i stopped registering new .io domains and cncf registered electo.dev but then we need to transfer all the certificates and everything over and i just haven't gotten around to it yeah wow so yeah the um hmm. um anyway um so that's what that's kind of waiting on because it would be nice okay. to offer that as a resource to projects since it's yeah, so I mean, much easier than the other things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we had little tiny growing pains around like the, you know, getting the directory structures named and things like that. But even with the little growing pains, it was still way easier than tracking down all the email addresses and managing that. Or dealing with the bounces. Oh my God. Yeah. The, um, so um, let alone the fact that CIVS is increasingly being used for spam. Hmm. And, and as a result, um, it's on a lot of people's block lists. Um, the, um, so. Yeah. The, um, yeah, I, I mean, obviously um, we 
the nice thing about doing it for K Native is that we've had an opportunity to actually find some of the additional sort of missing bits. Yeah. Um, like um, the fact that you couldn't mix, initially couldn't mix directories between non electo and electo elections, which I fixed. Um, I feel like it should deal with formatting problems a little bit more elegantly. And I've been working on that, you know, where if a candidate's profile isn't formatted correctly, it shouldn't refuse to display the election entirely, which is what it's doing now. <laughs> um, it should just not display that. Um, yeah. Candidate. Yeah. Um, you know, and a bunch of other sort of little stuff. Um, during the internship, we focused on getting the core voting behavior working correctly which was the important thing. Exactly. And now it's a matter of adding exception code for all the various ways that people can break it. <laughs> and is the intern still working on it or is, is the intern gone? Uh, occasionally, um, he's got a real job now. So okay. um, he pushed a fix this week though for, for one of the things that I identified, so. Nice. I mean, but it's one of the reasons why we choose this is it's a Flask app, so when we get it transferred over and we people start using it it's going to be very easy to get fixes yeah um, the uh, cool. um, even people who don't particularly do much python can handle flask yeah yeah i didn't realize it was written in python it's cool yeah yeah well that was the the choices we offered the internships was it could be either python or go um because among our team of three mentors, those were the two languages that all of us knew. Yeah. Because um, I mean, obviously a JavaScript thing would have also been okay from a public perspective, but we only had one of us who felt we knew JavaScript enough to mentor it, so. Yeah, yeah I actually do a lot of Python, but it's all, it's all more on the like data side. So like, I know, I know the bits about Python that involve like gathering and manipulating data. And those yeah. are the books that I know. Well, I don't know if you looked at Flask, Flask is pure MVC. So the functionality components really are completely separate from the presentation components, mm -hmm. which is, is good for backend people like us because yeah. where I would need help is if I have to fix the CSS or something. Yes. Which I am just no good at at all. No, I, I'm, I've broken things in really terrible ways. Um, editing css files <laughs> oh oh my god the um my uh, i had to update my online store for pottery mm -hmm. and i just went through this long thing where i was trying to change the typefaces ended up breaking the store entirely had to revert everything <laughs> gave up yeah that's uh surprisingly easy to do things like that mm -hmm. the um and people try to tell me css is not real programming <laughs> and then I'm like, yeah, okay, great, you fix it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if it's so easy, you fix it. <laughs> so. All right, cool. Well, if we don't have. We don't yeah, do we have, anything. do we have anything else outstanding? I don't think so. I think that's the charter bits, the only. Yeah. I mean, I have other stuff to do, like integrate charter statements into the templates, but. I have not been able to get to that. And yeah. it also feels premature before we, well, except we're going to merge Charter at least as a draft. Yeah. Um, I'm also hoping that Carolyn is back this week because- um, I was just gonna ask you when she gets back. I don't know, I just pinged her in Slack because it would be really nice to get the website live before KubeCon. Yeah. I'm gonna be afraid that we actually missed the window for that already because any CNCF staff are gonna be poorly available yeah well she looks like she's online last week i think that had a little palm tree okay her status so she might be she might be around this week okay um the um one thing i'm going to start a discussion on and i'll just ping you in slack when i do it is um and this is kind of more related to the other working group um, is trying to come up with a short list, like 10 or 12 metrics that all projects should look at. 
because the problem is the various places that we have guidance on metrics cast sort of a wide, because we have the metrics thing that you wrote up and I want to get more specific yeah. because I'm working with some new projects now and they're human bandwidth constrained. And so I really wanted to sort of narrow it down to, hey, if you're an early stage project, you know, here's this sort of list of metrics that you ought to really care about, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so it would be like, you know, new contributors who don't work, you know, new contributors with a subset of new contributors who don't work for your sponsoring company um, and that sort of thing to add yeah. on to that document. Um, the um, Yeah, because we could, we could edit that document to be, we could edit it to be a little more focused if we, if we wanted to. The trick is figuring out what those particular statistics are. Um, I popped over to the chaos project to see if they had any advice. Mm -hmm. They did have a recommended list of metrics. There's 140 metrics on it. <laughs> well, that's not a recommended list. That's all of our metrics, uh -huh. uh, says the person who works on the chaos project all the time. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, this is weird. So I, I can't actually find the project health one that I did because it was in contributor growth, but it's gone. Am I in the right place? It's a contributor strategy and it was in contributor growth. Um, and there was other stuff that was in there, right? Yeah, there was. Where is it all? I don't know. Is it under website? Yes, it's under website. Should it be? Uh, works for me. I don't care where it is, really. I would. Hmm. It does kind of press the urgency of getting the website online, though, because it's made the documents much harder to find. Yeah. Um, without the website being up. Once the website is up, it doesn't matter because people are not going to be looking at the repo. <laughs> Except us. Yeah. So is the, it website? Um, there, I found it. Yeah. Because you've actually got a bunch of these here. Like, I mean, a bunch of the, you've got a, sort of a start, right? Because obviously, uh, the responsiveness metrics are, are critical ones for your self-performance. Yeah. I mean, because I picked um, the ones that I thought most projects would need. Um, and I yeah. tried to keep it. I tried when I wrote this document, so it's it's not the chaos laundry list of all the metrics you could possibly ever, ever use. Yeah. I tried to keep it really focused on what I thought projects should care about. Mm -hmm. So it's probably, I guess it's a little more than 10. Let's see. Depending on how you how you count them. Yeah. Well, some of these things are not metrics. Like, do you have a security release procedure? Is not a metric. And presumably there are no public it is. metrics. So I have strong it. feelings about this. It is a metric. It is something that you measure that you make decisions based on. It's not a metric from the standpoint of um, something you can get automatically from GitHub. Yeah. The, um, I mean, actually, you know, honestly, for a more mature project, one of the things I would be looking at is the frequency of security releases. Mm -hmm. Because if you see that increasing, then it shows that you have a quality control problem. Um, the um, um, 
So. Because things like, you know, for example, uh, you know, commits PRs and issues or commits PRs and issues remaining steady or increasing over time doesn't really, the problem I have with recommending that is it doesn't tell you a whole lot because there are all sorts of reasons for those numbers to go up or down that don't tell you anything about that, yeah. whose information to the project is ambiguous, right? Issues mm -hmm. could be going up because more people are using the project or they could be going up because you have a quality control problem. Yes. Um, the, um, and I, I'd like to recommend things to people that have a more determinative answer, like, um, But the metrics always require interpretation, right? I mean, this yeah. is this is the thing with the are they remaining steady or increasing over time? If they're increasing over time and you expected them to remain steady, then there's probably something you should look at. If you expected them, um, you know, yeah. to increase over time and they're declining, then that's also something you should look at. But they they all require interpretation, and this is this is the this is the tricky bit, and this is the part that you know everybody wants just like I don't know the the canonical list of metrics that I that I can use, but depending on the, just depends on the project. Yeah. And the size of the, the project and what you're trying to achieve as a project and where you are in your maturity life cycle. Like, you know, a, a sandbox project would expect to have very, I would, I would look at very different things than I would look at a Kubernetes because it's a different, just a different phase of the life cycle of the project. This doesn't help you any. <laughs> yeah, the um, but there are probably some common things that we could probably summarize this in a way that you know, if you have to measure five things, these are these are a good place to start and what they might mean. Yeah. Um, and we could certainly do something around that. And actually, yeah, I'm seeing more little things I want to <coughs> add to a lot of these. Like, for example, for a project that has an original sponsoring company, um, it really is important, assuming that the project wants to broaden their contributor base, which presumably they do if they join the CNCF. Yeah. Um, it's critical to actually kind of split a lot of these contributor stats out into sponsoring company, non-sponsoring company. Mm -hmm. um, the um, which dev sets doesn't really help you do, mm -hmm. which is something to actually think about. Um, knowing the back end that would be hard. The um, <clears throat> so um, the um, You know, and sort of other things like some of these things don't come from dev stats, but one of the things that somebody can manually keep track of is um, missing expected release dates. Because mm -hmm. one of the problems I see projects getting into is is each release is later than the previous release, and that is caused by a variety of systemic problems. Well, let me know if you want some help on the on the metrics on picking the ones that might make sense, and whether we want to do it. Do we want to do it as this part of this doc or as a separate companion doc? No, I I think it, part of this doc makes sense. Let's just build okay. it up. I also just while we were talking, I pinged Carolyn and asked her to have a look at that pull request. Okay. The um oh did she speak up? Not yet. Oh no. Nope. So okay. Cool.
Well, if that's it, I'll yep. happily take the extra time in my evening back. Yeah, got a ton of <laughs> stuff to do, like usual. Yeah, like usual. Hey, I sent you that question about that fork in chat the other day. If you get a chance and can introduce me to somebody, that would be cool. Um, the one that you don't want to think about. Oh, <laughs> right. Yeah, I need to find out who the heck is dealing with that. So yeah, um, I will ask. Yeah, I, cool. I don't honestly know. I know that we use it for a couple of things, but I don't know who's in charge. OK. Yeah, if you yeah. just give me somebody to talk to, that'd be cool. So yeah, okay. All right, take care, have a good evening. Bye. Bye.